Thank you, Rafael Vasquez, for inviting me to be part of Career Night. Uh, I'm so excited for the opportunity to talk about my path and how I uh, went through the education system. Um, I want to start by congratulating you all who are pursuing your careers and have plans for your future. And I think it's really important to, to keep those goals in, in perspective and to do the steps necessary to get to them uh, without worrying too much about the bigger picture, but just one, one semester, one term, um, one application at a time. I am so blessed that I actually met Rafael Vasquez when I was very young and he told me I could go to college and was helpful to me when I was at San Jose Junior College. I spent several years beyond the two-year term at San Jose Junior College. Um, in 2006, when I graduated from high school, there was still a lot of questions about being undocumented, what it meant, and it was before the California Dream Act and the Dreamers Movement. Uh, and so I spent um, from 2006 to about 2010 attending San Jose Junior College before I finally transferred to university. Uh, I was encouraged by faculty at San Jose Junior College to apply for art school. So I attended Pratt Institute. Out of all the choices, I wanted to stay in California, but um, private schools really gave me more funding because they tend to have a little bit more reserved and endowments. So I, I ended up attending Pratt Institute in New York City, uh, where they were able to give me a scholarship as an undocumented person at the time in the California UC system. I couldn't really get the right type of support that I needed. Uh, and therefore, uh, I moved to New York. I spent uh, three three years going to Pratt Institute, and I graduated in 2013 with my BFA, my Bachelor's of Fine Arts. And I really uh, enjoy the experience of attending Pratt Institute because it is a leading art school, and I got to meet people from all over the place, all over the world, and at various. Um, from various backgrounds and so I, I became more knowledgeable of what was happening in art and design and I think being a creative people, um, being a creative person myself, um, if you're exposed to other people like yourself you learn more not just from not just from what's like in the um, in the teachers, what the teachers are mentioning, what, what the curriculum but also just what what the community is into. Uh, what's the tempo and the rhythm of the creative industry at the time? And I think getting a good sense of that pulse is what makes uh, a person leading edge. And so therefore I came, to, I'm so excited that I attended Pratt Institute and uh, where I still teach right now. I'm uh, teaching the foundations department at Pratt Institute. So I'm kind of always will be part of the Pratt family and now I'm also part of the Pratt family as a faculty. Um, so think about your connections, the community, at currently at San Jose Junior College or wherever you're attending um, because that community is there to support you. When you apply for schools, you will be asking um, to, for letters of recommendation. And so maintaining a good sense of community and knowing who supports you, who will write you good letters is part of the academic journey as well as getting good grades and um, awards and like things like that that like make your resume or your student CV very good. Um, I I feel blessed that I've always had people in my path, even in early 2000s when my family immigrated from Mexico. I attended uh, Lawrence Cook Middle School and I had a very very good faculty there who, who were helpful to me and um, noticed that I like art and, and supported me through um, my time there at middle school where I didn't really speak, I didn't speak English and I, I was behind in my academics and I had just immigrated from Mexico. So it's good to know and, and seek a support group always and also seek information. When I was transferring out of San Jose Junior College, um, I didn't really know what to do. I mean, um, my sister is also graduated from university and I'm so proud. Um, and But as first generation um, college students or university students, we don't really always know lots of information that is out there, which can make a difference in scholarships and everything that you do. So please seek information, and if one person doesn't know, go to the next person, um, because it's so important, because it could set the difference between you getting a scholarship if you knew about it, or not getting it, or being able to prepare the right application that might put you up front for, for more funding. 
Um, so please, please find out. Um, I, I think that was one of the things that helped me because I, I always knew that I didn't know. And so I always seek, seeked out people that knew what to do. So if I can tell you one encouragement, one note of advice is to, to find out who knows what they know. And sometimes people don't know the right stuff, so seek different people who know information about the process. Find out what you love. Find out what you like to do. Um, it tends to be that if you really like it, you will, ex you will excel at it, and therefore you would make good income and potentially have a good career. Um, so always find out what you love, what specifically, what makes you you. Uh, what makes you as a person, what makes you happy. Um, because I think if you're happy in what you choose, um, and don't be afraid to choose a career that you know you're going to be good at, even if like maybe your family doesn't know enough about it. Um, try to educate your family about what it means to be that kind of creative person or what it means to choose that type of career. Um, I think as a first generation students, our parents don't always know. Um, some parents do know, but some don't. Um, so please do find out like information and be generous and educate your family about what it is that you want to do. My uh, One of my big steps in life was that I decided to go to graduate school right after undergrad um, and I applied to Pratt Institute, uh, sorry, um, I applied to Yale University and uh, I really uh, felt so proud um, to be accepted to the program because only um, a small number of people get accepted and it's one of the leading master's MFA programs in, in the world. And so I graduated from uh, Yale University in 2015. Uh, and that master's degree allows me to be a practicing artist, which you can be without a credential, without going to school, but also to teach at university, which I love. I think um, staying in the education system and being a faculty really helps me also keep my knowledge of what's going on, what's going on in the creative industry and what the ge next generation is really into, um, because I think we always have to stay innovative and stay on top of what's going on. So that's my career path. I went to Lawrence Cook Middle School, I went to L.C. Allen, uh, and I graduated, actually transferred out of L.C. Allen because I couldn't get into the arts programs there, um, and I attended um, San Rosa High School. Uh, after graduating from San Rosa High, San Rosa High School, um, my perspective on what I could do because being undocumented and it being kind of secretive, um, I decided to go to San Rosa, uh, San Rosa Junior College. San Rosa Junior College is an amazing institution, and I highly encourage you, if you can't go straight to university, to go to San Jose Junior College. Um, and after that, I applied to get transferred out. And so I did the transfer application, which saved me money because um, I had some classes already done when I entered uh, Pratt Institute. Uh, and I got to focus really on a lot of art stuff, which was, was, was great. Um, and then from there, from Pratt Institute, I attended um, uh, Yale University which is an amazing achievement, I feel, for myself, looking back at, you know, being a young, you know, person without documents, immigrating to this country with my family. Um, I just feel very proud, and again, I couldn't have planned it. I think part of being a young person or being a person entering the education system, doesn't matter what age you are, is that you, um, you don't really know what's coming. So you kind of just do their best at every step. Um, seek the information, learn the most, and then just sort of see where life, where everything takes you. And if you are very good at it and you're very diligent um, and you seek information and you get good grades, um, that kind of sets you up for like the next step. So I never knew that I would move to New York and I never knew that I would go to uh, Yale University with such amazing peers and people, students from all over the world, um, and, and learn from some of the leading artists in the industry uh, at Yale University. So. Uh, all I mean to say is that you just don't know what's coming, so you just do your best, find out what makes you happy, find out what your passion is, and hopefully that passion can take you to the place you want to be in the future. And think five years ahead, like where do you want to be in five years? What do you want to be making? Where do you want to be leaving? Like where, where it doesn't have to be the same place that you are now. Another thing is that many young people are like afraid to, to, go, to come to New York, to move to another state. Um, to apply to schools that are beyond just the area where you are. And I think that applying to schools in the area is really good because some of those funding uh, available is really good for you. And because you're from there, you can get it. Um, but also apply to Ivy League schools, to um, other schools that you wouldn't even think you could get into because you don't really know what they're looking for. And if you're a career knight, 
that means that you're already like amazing uh, and so they might want you and so don't say no to yourself put yourself out there and wait for people to respond to you and see if you get in uh, and again ask everyone ask other people who are in your industry that you want to go into uh, you know what is it like to do that what does it actually mean it's very different from the glamour what careers look like from the outset and then it's also different what it actually is on a day-to-day um, so, you know, on a day-to-day, -day, I make paintings, I do shows, I take photographs, um, I do accounting, I do show programming, um, I make sure my work <laughs> arrives and gets to the right location, uh, you know, there's just a lot to being an artist, and, and uh, an artist who's independent, because I choose to not be represented by a gallery and split my profits 50-50 with the gallery, I choose to uh, market my own work, do shows with galleries on a one-time base, uh, focus on museum-oriented uh, stuff. So just really um, find out what you want to do, find out what makes you happy, uh, and then find out how what is the best situation for you to go through so that you can be at the top of the level in that industry. Again, thank you so much. My name is Maria de Los Angeles. I'm an artist. I grew up in Santa Rosa, and I'm living now in the New York City area. Have a good day. And congratulations to everyone who is here today at Career Night.